George Wilco is with me. Good to see you again. See you. Uh, have you grown since the last time I saw you? Or are you still six foot seven? Uh, still six foot seven. I don't think I can't get too much taller playing baseball. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, six foot seven. It's yeah. not easy to necessarily hit. They say when you're that tall, but this hasn't been a problem for you so far. Not yet. <laughs> well, how have you grown? As a person, as a baseball player, we talked back in spring training and you had your first season in the minor leagues. Yeah, um, grown a lot. I'd say uh, I've really just grown up um, throughout the course of the year, both on and off the field. Um, you know, going through a, a full first season, just being around a lot of older guys, uh, I think for me it's like just starting to become a professional um, and, you know, learn from the older guys, uh, learn from the experiences and just grow and develop not only as a baseball player but just as a human um and so i think throughout the course of the the past like eight eight to ten months being gone um you know out playing baseball every day i think it's just a lot of learning learning the little things every day both on and off the field um and just continuing to grow in general yeah 18 years old you're facing pitchers who are what 25 26 (laughs) yeah i was I believe I was the youngest player on every field that I played on, except for like instructs and stuff in the fall. Um, there might have been like one or two pitchers that were a little younger than me. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was kind of, I always had that chip on my shoulder, I felt like, um, but I, I love it. Is it intimidating? Um, no, nah, I've, been, I've been playing up my whole life. Um, travel ball when I was younger, it was always trying to get to the, the highest level possible just for the better competition. Um, and so, you know, and I kind of jumped into pro ball a year earlier than everyone. I kind of knew that was the expectation, and I was I was ready for it. I like it. Yeah, so I spoke to a scout about you, mm-hmm. and he said that when you were – he said a few things. When you were 16 years old, you were in an area code game in San Diego. Remember this? Yeah. And most of the players were, were, what, 17, 18 years old at the time? Yeah, yeah. All right, so this is a quote from the scout. He said, George hit a ball down the right field line that was basically hit – through the first baseman. And then he said, and this was in all capital letters in this text, he said, it was the loudest sound I had ever heard at that event since I've been covering it. It sounded like somebody lit off an M80 when you hit the ball. Do you remember this, by the way? I do remember this. So what happened? You, I want to hear your side of the story. Um, you know, Air Code's a pretty cool event. Uh, we were in San Diego, and the way that field's built is there's just like, like the, the stands are almost like straight up. So it's like these scouts are like on top of you. Um, and so I was just, I, I'm young kid going out there just trying to perform. Um, and yeah, I remember I had a pretty good week, uh, inside fastball, just turned on it. And, uh, I remember seeing like the, the swing on uh, Twitter after, um, and like hearing it too. So I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Is that the best sound you've made hitting a baseball? Um, that park since it like kind of, it's almost like uh sat in there a little mm-hmm. bit and the, the stands go up that it echoes pretty loud. Um, so I'd say it's. Probably one of the cooler sounds, but uh, really any squared up ball at the wood bat is the best sound in baseball. All right. So then the next summer, this is after your high school baseball season, uh, most players getting drafted don't play anymore, right? Mm-hmm. They take the summer off. But you signed up to play for the Northwoods League, right? Mm-hmm. And this is uh, where you face college hitters. Yeah. So you wanted that challenge, right? Can you explain why you decided, you know what, I, I want more. And to be in high school at the time, knowing you're going to kind of get your Brains beating in, in theory, uh, facing these guys. You're like, no, 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 I want this. Why did you decide, you know, I want to, I want more baseball and I want this challenge? Yeah. So for me, like the decision of graduating high school year early was not only just to go get drafted. It was more just to um, put myself in a situation where I'd be playing higher level baseball for better development. Um, and so, you know, high school season ended. I knew I had the couple of months and I didn't know that I was going to sign. You know, I was hoping I'd get drafted, but, um, you know, there's still, it was still unsure going into it. And so I wanted to play. Um, and so I, luckily I was put to, uh, put up with the, the Green Bay Rockers, which is, um, you know, they, they took care of me up there and it was a pretty good, uh, pretty good fit. And, um, yeah, I was able to go up and just continue to play baseball. For me, it was like a chance to continue to grow. Um, you know, like you said, most guys might take the time off before draft or, or college, but for me, it was like, if I end up going to college, I'll be playing college competition all summer and then hopefully earn a, earn a starting spot as a freshman. Mm-hmm. And um, if I end up getting drafted, I'll have some ABs under my belt at a higher level than high school um, before the draft. And so for me, it was kind of 
I wanted to go out there and just see the better arms and, and really go push myself um, and kind of get in that uncomfortable situation, which I feel like was better for me and for my development, kind of get that started a little bit before um, just jumping right into pro ball. Well, how tough was it? Yeah, there's some, there some tough nights. <laughs> I remember, um, you know, the group of guys that we had, a team we had, was a great team. They ended up actually going and winning the the Northwoods League Championship, so I did get a ring that year. All right, um, just for my a little bit of participation. But um, no, it was tough. There were some nights I'd kind of call home and be like, "Man, like, just you know, like baseball struggles." Um, but I think like it was nice starting to feel that too early, uh, going into pro ball. Uh, or even if I was going into college, knowing there's going to be some rough patches. Uh, and so I think just being in that uncomfortable situation, um, grinding it out against some tougher competition, I think, you know, doing that at a younger age only helped me uh, once I got into pro ball. Um, and so, you know, I, as much as the the hard times might suck, they, they still make you better. Yeah. Here's what the scout said about you. He said he's absolutely fearless talking about you and you – Cannot break his spirit or his will to win. <laughs> Accurate? 100%. Yeah. Um, you know, growing up, I was always a competitor. Still am a competitor. I want to win. Um, and, you know, being now for playing for, having a chance to play for a team that I grew up watching, it only, you know, makes me want to win even more, go help them. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, whether it's, you know, PE class at, at, in high school or you know, on a professional baseball field, uh, Still always competing. <laughs> yeah, well, everyone listening or watching, they're like, well, when's George going to get the majors? We need him now. Mm -hmm. As a, just a Sox fan, seeing what the Sox went through, I mean, how much do you, do you want to be a part of this to try to help this team out, even though you you, you were in low A last yeah. season? Yeah, I think for me, um, you know, I, I like saying this just because, it, to me, like, I think it's it, it means more. Um, you know, most guys, at the end of the day, it's it's a job, it's a business, Um and you got to produce for yourself because, you know, maybe get traded, released, whatever. Um, but for me, like, I, I really hope that I put myself in a, in a position to one day get to put on the, the White Sox uniform and, and play in Chicago. Um, and, you know, being from the, the suburbs, growing up, watching the team, like, I think, um, you know, it really is like almost extra motivation. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're, we're in a position now where I mean, it's only up from here, hopefully. So, um, you know, I really it's, it's motivating every day to – go to work and, and know that I could potentially be a part of that, um, you know, turnaround. And so, you know, kind of stay where my feet are and, and do what I control can control now. Um, you know, still got some levels to, to climb, but I think uh, if I could be, you know, a part of that, that turnaround and, and eventually get the, the chance and opportunity to play in Chicago, I mean, that's, that's my dream. Let's talk about your season. And it was funny because before we started, you were asked, what do you think of your season? Mm -hmm. And you weren't happy with it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the numbers. I mean, you played 76 games for Class A Kannapolis, 11 homers, 52 RBIs. You had 39 walks in those 76 games. That would have ranked third on the White Sox, 39 walks. Uh, how would you sum up how you played mm -hmm. for the year? Yeah. Um, you know, there's some good moments and some bad moments. I think throughout the year is just starting to grow up, find some consistency. And like I said, just continue to – mold into a professional uh, player. Um, and, you know, I think that there were some really good weeks and some really bad weeks. And I think overall, over the course of 76 games, I mean, it's a lot of just learning about me, uh, myself. It's my first big sample size of kind of understanding, you know, what my game is like. And, you know, it's honestly nice having it be done now because I could just go in the cages and start to work on, you know, what I did bad at. Um, and so I think I, I was excited to get to, to Kannapolis, um, be able to play for, you know, a great manager, great staff. Um, we made a playoff run at the end, and it was a great team, great environment. And so, um, you know, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, through some of the, the rough parts and, and some of the good parts, I think there's always room to improve in baseball. So, All right, I'll bring up the strikeouts. You had 132 of them. Obviously, you want to cut down on that. I looked this up. And, yeah, there have been the comps with you and Aaron Judge, just because of, from the physical uh, standpoint. Uh, Judge's first year in the minors, 131 games in low A and high A. 131 games, he had 131 strikeouts. Mm -hmm. But he was also 22, mm -hmm. four years older than you. So, you know, and actually, he didn't get called up until he was 24. His first full season, he was 25. But, you know, for you, what do you want to do? How, how is your approach, how has your approach gotten better and what do you need to do to cut down on the strikeouts yeah um so the strikeouts really come from just 
trying to generate more power. And a lot of it's kind of grown up and maturing, um, you know, understanding like, hey, I'm just going to go up this, this AB and take my walk. Um, and so having a lot of walks, I think that's kind of where some of those came from, just starting to grow up and not just chase and swing at everything. Um, but really, I think getting those strikeouts down is just continuing to work on my contact skills. Um, and so, you know, throughout high school, I always was kind of lifting, getting big, getting strong, trying to generate more power. Now I'm at a point where, um, you know, I'm starting to develop physically. And and although the work off the field, I feel like, is keeping my power there. So now it's just rather than training, you know, heavy weights and try to hit the ball 500 feet, it's just, you know, let's be a more complete hitter. Um, and so I think seeing like a like the strikeout rate and all the strikeouts from last year, like I said, it's, it's only like, all right, I know I do this. I know that's part of my game. So how do we fix it? And now we just attack it. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like if I could clean up that part of my game, um, it's only going to help the other parts that I'm good at. And then, you know, hopefully that gets, puts me in a, a position to, to play in Chicago one day. How much video do you watch of your at-bats? All the time. <laughs> I, uh, I talk with my, my mental performance coach um, throughout the season this year, and he, he actually kind of found something out with me that, that's pretty interesting where – you know, it was it was tough watching like some some abs where I was striking out, and it's like you know you're watching it and it's just like oh, like what am I doing right? Because you're thin at home and it's easier to to look back at it then. Um, and so I watched probably more video of me failing than I did doing good. Um, and I think that that like almost using that as like a, a technique to it's not only the mechanics and stuff and but really just like assess like pitch to pitch like. Um, you know, my mindset behind it and be like, all right, I swung and miss at this pitch. I step out the box. Like, what was I thinking here? And trying to really like put myself back, um, like in the box from sitting on my couch at home on the phone. Um, I think that video is definitely, you know, a tool that helped me. All right. So when will you watch the videos? Will it be right after the game? Is it the next Whenever day? Whenever they're uploaded. When they're, um, <laughs> you're like waiting on your computer. When is this going to be? We had, a, we had a good video guy, so he'd get them to us pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and so most of the time, if they're not up that night after the game, it would just be the next day before the game. And a lot of it, too, was like video on the, the next day starter um, and stuff like that. But if I'm watching something of myself, I try to be as recent as possible. And then, um, you know, if I'm trying to just just feel good, maybe pull up some of the better swings, then, um, you know, it could be from games prior, but usually as soon as possible. How much do you beat yourself up over the slumps, the, the mm-hmm. tough at bats? Or do you not? Or are you trying to get to that place? Yeah, I think this year I learned a lot. Um, that was part of the growing up, like understanding that there's going to be days where you're 0 for 4. Uh, there's going to be days where you strike out, uh, you know, a couple of times. And so I think for me, like I went into spring training and, you know, I was 0 for 4 one day and I'm like, oh, man, it's the end of the world. Like I got to come back tomorrow at four home runs. No, don't do that. Yeah. And so I think as the year progressed, I started to mature and understand that, you know, failure is part of the game. Yeah. Um, and so... For me, is like I am pretty hard on myself, uh, and so I think as the year went on, it was just start to um, you know understand like maybe uh, I have a bad day here, but it's a new day tomorrow, um, and you know, I get to go in and play the same game, and I think that helped me with the consistency as the year went on, uh, and not having like such highs and lows, and just be able to uh, kind of tugboat, keep it even. So I looked at NLB Pipeline. They have you reaching the majors in 2027. Mm-hmm. You'd be 21 years old. Does that feel right for you? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, projections and stuff are cool. Still got to get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the end of the day, if I could go out and perform, maybe it's sooner. And if I don't, maybe it's later. But, um, you know, debuting at 21 would definitely be, definitely be a dream come true. Yeah, when I was starting out as a sportscaster, everyone was like, when are you going to get to Chicago? When are you going to be ready? Uh, it took me a long time to get here, actually. It took 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> um, so, do you have a favorite home run that you hit last season? Last season? Yeah. Um, ooh, I was 18 years old um, in my first week playing low A, right? And I'm the youngest kid on the field. It was my first week. And... Yeah, we we're, were playing the Fredericksburg Nationals, so I ended up beating us in the, the Class Lowe Championship. Um, and I had I was struggling for my first couple of weeks in Lowe after I got called up. And that week was very rough, but I ended up hitting a home run. And I uh, it was pretty like pretty big hit. And I was kind of fired up, like feeling good. And I, I like threw my bat towards the dugout, but it was more like 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 yes, I finally like like now we're good, we go. And the next day I was off. It was a Friday. It was my scheduled off day. And I came back Saturday and I got hit. They threw at me. 
And so I was wow. like, okay, like really, like you're going to throw at me. And so I get hit my first or second AB, whatever it was. Um, and then I came back the AB after that, hit a bomb, like 450 some feet. And I'd say that was my favorite home run just because it was like my first week. I'm already, you know, making the other team mad. Um, and I was able to kind of bounce back. And I still had a rough week after that. But I think for me personally, it was like, it's a cool little, cool little moment. Do you think they threw at you because of how you reacted to the home run? I think so. I think they thought I was trying to show the pitcher up, which it was more I was just almost honestly showing myself up in my head. And yeah. Like, all right, like, I can't hit. <laughs> Are they calling you King George? In Indianapolis, where is this coming from? Is this a real thing? So this came from our our field like announcer, um, like the guy who um, calls you know, the game, calls the games, the fans. Oh, oh the, the public address, the public address. Yeah, yeah, PA. So he he uh, he. I actually went on a podcast and talked with him. He said he always likes to come up with nicknames for their guys, um, and so King George is is what he came up with, and it kind of just stuck. <laughs> we don't have to keep it going, but. Uh, that's that's kind of the the nickname I had in Canapolis. Yeah, right, well, that would be awesome if you came here to Chicago and you acted like a king and played like one. That's the dream, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. So you uh, you're working out this off season, and you just you worked out this morning mm-hmm. in Chicago. Who's in your little group? Because there's some guys that people might know about. Yeah, so I work out right now at a gym called uh, Bracy Performance, uh, ran by Kyle Bracy, um, and they got the same time slot as Stephen Kwan. So uh, you know, working out with a uh, Gold Glover and All Star. Um, a huge player in a playoff team, unbelievable. Um, so I see him around there. Uh, Jake Cronenworth, Jake Cronenworth works out there. Um, those are probably the two biggest names, and then we got a bunch of other just professional guys, um, kind of mixed in there, and uh, pretty good group uh, of trainers to help us out too. Yeah, what have you seen just watching Stephen Kwan? Yeah, I mean, obviously the the makeups off the charts. He's a great great person. Um, like I think anybody would say, but then just seeing him work, uh, mm. like the attention to detail he has, um, you know, he's not going in there just lifting as heavy as he can, but he's seeing like uh, how every little detail is controlled um, and how well he can control those little details. Um, and it's cool seeing him and really like he, he embodies his game. You know, he knows he's not the biggest guy or maybe the strongest guy, but um, you know, he's going to maximize everything he has and, and he's able to go into the gym every day and, and work on himself um, so I think it's super cool that, and, um, last year we did it all year where, uh, I, every, every time I go to the gym before I work out a cold plunge and, yeah. uh, me and Steven would be like sometimes button heads going in the cold plunge. Cause we both would, like work out around the same time and maybe I'd beat him there that day and I'm in it or like I walked in there and he's in it. Um, so that was kind of cool doing that, but even just, you know, how much, um, effort he puts into his recovery and stuff like that. Um, definitely a cool role model to look up to, um, you know, I appreciate appreciate Kyle Kyle Bracy allowing me to be around him. How long can you go in the cold plunge pool? Um, depends on how cold it is. <laughs> we would get the ones in minor league spring training. We have like the metal tubs, yeah. And uh, some of the guys, you know, love getting them freezing cold, and so we get them down to like like forty degrees, like so pushing like under freezing, yeah, almost. like almost freezing. Yeah. Um, just get loaded the ice in it, and so if it's that cold, it's only. You know, at three minutes is usually the mark. Like, all right, three minutes. But if it's one that's like 50, 55, I think you, you definitely go longer. Yeah, I think people might be surprised, by the way, to know that Stephen Kwan's in Chicago in the offseason. He is. He's in Chicago. But and I was talking to him about this last year, and he's he said he roams the streets anonymously. No one knows that that's Stephen Kwan. I'm sure White Sox fans know what he looks like, but he can be here anonymously. Yeah. I mean, if you're a baseball fan, um, you might know him, but like – it's not like he's, you know, the Aaron Judge walking yeah. by, big human, or like, oh, you're an athlete. You know, Steven looks like a regular guy, but, um, you know, the stuff he does on the field is definitely not regular. I want to talk about your confidence because when we spoke in spring training last season, uh, you said your goal was to be a Hall of Famer. You mm-hmm. want to be one of the best that ever played the game. I mean, mm-hmm. so for someone to say that, that means there's something really inside you that believes that. So you said those words, and then you had your first season – and you saw, like, well, this is who my competition is going to be. How confident are you now versus where you were last year? And how was it? How much was it tested because of the struggles of being a minor league baseball player? Yeah, I mean, it's easy to say that stuff. Obviously, you know, anybody, oh, I'm going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. But, like, I truly believe that if I can do everything possible and completely maximize, you know, my potential, mm-hmm. then maybe I'll get there one day. Mm-hmm. And so I think going throughout this year, it's only really put in perspective what it's going to take. Um, and you know, you see all the, 
other top prospects or guys go off, have crazy years that, and, and you actually go out and do it. And you know, like how hard it is to do that. Um, and so, you know, I, I like to hold myself to that standard. I, and I think if I could go to the field every day and, you know, do, uh, go through, go about my business, like a hall of famer would, um, then, you know, I put myself in a, in a position to continue to, to go down that path. But at the end of the day, it's taking care of, you know, today and what I could do now, um, and if I if I could kind of do that day by day, brick by brick, um, then eventually I, I hope I put myself in a position to be there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, still the goal. Yeah. So I know, of course. Yeah. Jackson Holiday, did you were you like a watching some? Yeah. I, I'm just kind of thinking about that with yeah. you because you're the White Sox. You know, you're in the top ten of their prospect list. Here's Jackson Holiday, number one prospect, gets called up to the major leagues, struggled big time, had to go yeah. back down. Yeah. So does that kind of stay in your head a little bit? That shouldn't stay, say stay in your head, but does that give you a little bit of pause to think like, wow, this is this is a great example of how tough this game can be yeah. and what it takes to not only get the majors, but then to stay there? Yeah. You know, I, I obviously don't want Jackson to fail. Yeah. Um, you know, I want him to go up and just I, I don't know him, but I, you know, just I would root for him. Um but I think it was really good for like baseball fans to see him struggle just because everything he did you know, since he graduated high school has just been like amazing. Um, and like off the charts, no one's really been doing that. Just had a crazy year. And then like to go up and fail, struggle, like yeah. when the lights are on, I think is it's interesting because it puts in perspective to like the people who don't understand the game as in depth that like, you know, it is, it is hard. And even if you're, you know, one of the best players all year, like Aaron Judge, for instance, mm-hmm. you could still go through a little rough patch when you're in the playoffs. And so I think it was, um, cool for the fans to kind of see that um and then obviously how he was able to go down come back up make some adjustments it shows you know the type of player he is um but i think yeah like you know it, it is it's not an easy game and um you could be on on top of it at, at one moment and you know it could come back and bite you later so uh, that's where kind of like the mature and staying as even as you can really help me throughout the year and, you know not getting too low at moments or too high at moments as well but, um, yeah, I mean, watching him and the stuff he did in the minor leagues was unbelievable. Um, and then, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody wanted him to fail when he got up there. But seeing that, it really definitely put it in perspective that, you know, it is hard. And especially making that jump to the, the big leagues is pretty hard. All right, so I want to talk about your team a little bit. Canapolis, Cannonballers, you guys got to the championship. Yeah. Uh, what was the team like that you were playing on? Some of those guys you know, that, that contributed to that championship uh you know, getting to the championship had already moved on, but you know you came along. What was the team like when you showed up, and then getting to the postseason and almost winning it all? Yeah. So when I showed up, they were on top of the world. <laughs> um, they, they were. We had like a crazy win streak going, um, and it was like that feeling where you show up to the field and you just know you're going to win. Mm-hmm. It's like you know you don't care who's starting that day or um, you know who you're playing, whatever. It's just you know you know you're going to show up to the field with the guys and you're all going to ball out. And so that was kind of that feeling when I first got there. And it was nice being around that atmosphere um, when I wasn't playing my best because it kind of kept my spirits high. Um, and I knew that, like, I can, you know, work on what I need to work on and the other eight bats around me are still going to go out and produce and, and we're going to win games. So that was definitely a really cool experience. Um, kind of the timing of when I went up there, it was right before they clinched the the first half. And mm-hmm. clinch first half, you get a, a playoff spot. So, I got to celebrate a little bit of that with them, even if I was only there for a couple of weeks before. Um, but that was super cool. And then a lot of those guys started to make their way up um, as they deserved. And we kind of had the the new group of, like, draft guys come in. Mm-hmm. And so I'd been there for, for a good handful. And I felt like so when the new group of draft guys came in, it was kind of like I was able to almost, like, emerge myself as kind of like a leader. Like, oh, I've been here. Even if it was my first year, it was just like – you know, like I, I've been here a little bit longer than them. Um, and then we had a you know great group of guys that came in and, and started producing for us as well. And we were able to start to kind of merge from like that first half clinching team to like the second half with some new different pieces. Um, and, and I think as like the playoffs approached, everyone, even the new guys, like when they came in, knew like, hey, we're a playoff team. So it's like, you know, we, we had a, a little rough patch in the, the second half of the season where it wasn't as, you know, happy rainbows as the, the first time, yeah. the first half of the season. And then second half came around. I feel like the closer we got to playoffs, we started putting it together. And then, um, you know, that first first playoff series we had uh, against Charleston almost felt like the championship to us. Um, it was just, you know, the team really came together. 
um, some of the new pitchers we had stood up, um, some of the bats we had stood up, and it's playoff baseball. It's a blast. Uh, I want to ask you about a couple of the guys. One is Riku Nishida. So he scored the most runs of any player in the minor leagues yeah. all over the country. He had 114 runs in 127 games, 86 walks, 44 steals. And he was in Kannapolis, went to Winston-Salem, went to Birmingham, helped lead them to a championship. Mm-hmm. So tell me about Riku Nishida. He's only five foot six, five foot seven, but he's a spark plug and a half. He's a spark plug. Um, and, I mean, he's everything about him is awesome. A super cool guy. Great person um, off the field and on the field. Um, really just like, a, I guess you could say, like a superstar athlete. Um, you know, he makes the game look so easy, and it really comes easy to him, too. He would tell you that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he, he's awesome. He For, like, a, a guy like that, like, in the clubhouse, he's the type of guy that you play against and you just hate. But when he's on your team, he's, like, the best guy there, you know. And so being able to play with him and, and share a clubhouse with him is awesome. We live in the same house in Kannapolis, so, you know, he's super cool um, just to live around. Um and we were we were together for a little bit in uh, Arizona as well for performance camp. So uh, me and Riku, pretty good relationship. But he's uh, you know on the field, just an unbelievable baseball player. Get, gets it done. Yeah, you know, he steals base. He knows the game so well. Um, he gets hits when he needs to. He scores runs, like you said. He hits um, routine ground balls to second base and beats them. Beats them out. Plays hard. Plays hard. And, and like when you're looking across the field at like a like Riku, the other team looks at Rico. You know they see he's tiny, small, whatever. And they don't expect much. And then he goes out and he's four for five with like two stolen bases and a couple of RBIs. And you're like, all right, good night. Well, whatever. We'll see you tomorrow. The next day he does it again. And it's like, yeah, he's really talented. Um, but I think just like him, if he was to go to, to Chicago, like the guys would love him there too. You yeah. know, just his personality. And he always makes everyone smile. And it's super cool. Well, you mentioned Stephen Kwan, and he's kind of like yeah. a Stephen Kwan clone, I guess. He's maybe not as tall as him, but do you see the similarities between the two of them? Yeah, I, I've never been on a field with Stephen, so, um, but I know Riku knows of Stephen. Yeah. And I always make jokes because uh, he knew that I knew Stephen as well uh, about he like how he wants to be like Stephen Kwan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, I mean, he his contacts obviously up there. He walks, knows the game so well. Um, but yeah, Riku Riku's not a the biggest baseball fan, but he does know Stephen Kwan, and I'm sure that he he's not a baseball fan. What do you mean? Well, he doesn't like follow the gang. You're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. He he loves baseball. He loves playing it, but he loves playing it because he's good at it. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't 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 follow around as much. We'll be playing MLB The Show at the yeah. house, and uh, and Riku will like be picking teams, and we're scrolling through teams, and he'll like land on a team, and he'll be like, the Mets are they good? <laughs> I'm like, Rico, he doesn't know. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I think that that's what makes him spo- so special is that he just goes out there and he plays hard. Um, and, you know, he's not doing it for, you know, the money. He's not doing it for anything like that. He's just going out and being himself. Uh, Joe Perez, he was mm-hmm. on your team for a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. So he came over from the Dodgers in the Kopech trade. What did you see from him? For him, it was really cool just seeing, like, another young guy at the, the level um, and especially seeing some of the success he had with the Dodgers, like, knowing, like, all right, like, this guy's, like, a legit player. And so I think it was really cool. He kind of came in towards the end of the year um, and was able to start to put it together with us. But just, like, seeing another guy who's kind of, like, at the same level as I am, both young. Uh, yeah, he's, like, 19, I think. Yeah, he's 19 this year. I think he just turned 20. Okay. Um, but, like, I think it was cool seeing that and just being able to, like, um, almost, like, push myself, like, with him. You know, I think you're around, like, high-level, high-talent players. You're – you're going to naturally make yourselves better. Um, so having a guy like that come in, uh, and, you know, be able to take BP from him, just pick his brain, talk baseball. Um, he speaks pretty decent English. Um, yeah, I mean, it's super cool, and especially someone that's kind of at the same level as me, like age-wise, like younger guy. I thought that was a really neat experience. And, um, yeah, it was, I mean, when he came, great bad, definitely helped us out, so – He's a really good guy. All right, so for White Sox fans who are wanting to know, like, hey, what's coming? I mean, obviously there's you. We've talked about uh, Riku and just the team that's in Kannapolis. But uh, what do you see? What, what What's – because you're down there, you're living this, and you're mm-hmm. amongst these guys, and uh, Sox fans are just want to see and feel and believe in what's to come. What, what do you see? Yeah. I mean, obviously Sox fans, you know, watch and care about the big league team. But being like a minor leaguer um, – Honestly, it's just like motivation, you know, a lot of grit, just guys 
showing up to the field, knowing that there is potential jobs open. Um, and, you know, if, if our farm system can, guys can put things together, they know that they're, they're going to be able to go up to Chicago and, and perform and kind of turn things around. Um, and so I think like for me living it really, it's for us, it's just motivating. Um, you know, obviously you want to be on the, the team that's, you know, winning everything, whatever, but like being in a farm system when the big league team is not the best team in baseball for, for minor leaguers, like selfishly, it's a good thing is, you know, that means there's um, spots for you, uh, up above. And so I think, you know, being around the guys, um, not everyone's a huge White Sox fans, but, um, you know, just the guys who are now in the organization uh, at the lower levels with me, at least, I think it's, it's really motivating. And then, you know, going to the field together, knowing that we could be that, that next crop of guys that, that get to Chicago too. Um, you know, I think a lot of us kind of use that as, as motivation drives us every day when we show up. Um, and at least for me, you know, like I said, I, I want to be there and I know the guys around me do too. And so, even if the big league team might not look the best right now um, for the fans, I think if they could look a little deeper, you know, not, every, not everyone follows the minor leagues, but, um, you know, we got a great farm system and it's only getting better. So I think uh, it's, it's a little bit exciting. All right. Yeah. Uh, plans for the, uh, the off season. What do you got going on? Not much. Um, I got, uh, we're going on vacation for Christmas with the family. Mm-hmm. Be, like, like I said, my first time uh, going out of the country. So I'm excited for that. But, uh, other than that, um, I'll get out to Arizona pretty early uh, before spring training. We'll have a camp, uh, and I'll hopefully get out to early camp. And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of lifting, a lot of hitting, uh, a lot of a lot of working out, and um, nah, that's what I love to do. And I think the off season too, it's the best time to do it, um, especially here in the, the colder weather. Get inside, just kind of get gritty with it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. you're Chicago tough. You can take Chicago winters, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't moved to the warm weather. <laughs> Not yet, at least. Hey, this is great seeing you. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to uh, the upcoming season. I'm not going to ask you where you think you're going to play, but I'm sure you want to be moving up, moving us. Of course you do. But yeah. uh, uh, it was great watching you play this year. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, I think White Sox fans uh, can, if you're going to dream, the White Sox fans can dream of you playing uh, on the South Side. And I know how much that would mean for you and your family. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Chuck. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem.